Well, I'm joined by uh, Jane and Ray here in the studio ahead of the PAG meeting on Monday night. Um, certainly one that's going to be quite controversial, to say the least. Um, the, the overview is drugs legalising and, and obviously everyone knows your story and we'll come to that in a second anyway. You. But you've come over to talk about this. I mean, you have a man, do you think we're the test bed for legalising drugs? So tonight I think it's really about just starting a discussion on drugs, about having a pragmatic approach where we start to look at treating drugs issues as a health problem rather than a criminal justice problem. Uh, when we say legalisation, we're not calling for a free, free for all. This is not about putting drugs in, in you know, uh, shops for, and making them readily available. What we're talking about is strict regulations and controls of the drug trade. Just like cigarettes then? Well, we can learn many lessons from cigarettes and tobacco over the last few years, and we've managed to show how, through regulation, we've managed to reduce use, uh, make stricter age controls on tobacco, and make positive progressions with regards to tobacco use through regulation rather than through making tobacco illegal. Uh, and you, you concur with this, do you? I mean, totally, yes. I mean, oh, for people who don't know the story, you lost your children two drugs um, which were unregulated is what you're going to say here I suppose it, that if that had been a different scenario things could be different? Uh, yes my, my son's one was age 20 the other was age 19 um, they went to a football match um, and one of them had bought some uh, powdered ecstasy um, we don't know exactly the situation the circumstance in which they they took it all um, but um, they were found dead on the following Monday together in a room um, in Bolton. Um, they'd taken by the toxicology tests um, all of this uh, powder drug, which one of them had bought on the dark net on the internet. Um, uh, one of them had over six or six times a lethal dose. Uh, the other had um, uh, just under six, so it was enough to kill you know, a dozen people, maybe more. I mean, that's an unusual batch, obviously, because mostly it's, it's cut down and cut down, isn't it? I mean, but it but is, yeah. at the end of the day, no one knows what you, you're getting. No. This, this, this is the point. No. Um, I, uh, I was introduced to anyone's child by um, a, a friend of Torrens who went to a meeting. Um, and uh, it, it means that he immediately resonated with me what they were doing. Um, and I thought, that, you know, this has got to be the way forward because what is happening at the moment just is not working. People like things that are illegal, that's just a fact of life, don't you agree? That you know, It's like going to a pub before you're 18, it's just something that in, is in everyone's way of seeing things. If it's illegal, people want to try it. Yeah, and one, one thing we're doing is trying to make drugs really boring. <laughs> so ra rather than, yeah, there's a, certainly a glamorous nature to the illicit market, but it, fundamentally, this is about pragmatism. This is about recognising that drug use does exist in our society. And how can we make it safer? Of course, the other man's got one of the harder regimes for dealing with drugs in the sense if you get caught, the tariffs here are pretty well double the UK. Um, your comments on that? I mean, it hasn't particularly put people off, I suppose, but... Uh, you know. Well, drug use still very much exists, I believe. A couple of weeks ago, there was a case with a couple of underage children who were hospitalised as a result of drugs. Again, it's just about accepting this as a reality and thinking, right, how can we make it as safe as possible? So, and that's your case basically tonight, um, and, and you, the thrust is just to see the Isle of Man doing, or you, I mean obviously trying for the UK, but do you see the Isle of Man being a test bed? Well I think, I think the Isle of Man is a very interesting case and a place where we could certainly start to innovate in some interesting ways. Uh, actually there are lots of places around the, the world that are already pursuing more interesting drug policies, take Canada which is about to legally regulate. Uh, cannabis and a lot of states in the United, United a States, a number of states in yeah. the US, and so really this isn't about using the Isle of Man as a guinea pig. Really, it, it's saying that these are these are measures that are being trialled in a number of countries, and why doesn't the Isle of Man follow suit? And, and, and you know, do you have a view on this before? The, obviously, the tragic death of your children. I mean, is this something that you, you've realised there's a problem out there that needs to be solved since? Uh, my, my we were aware, for instance, that my, one of my sons was dabbling in drugs. He got yeah. involved uh, um, when he, in his early teens. Um, so we did speak to him. We had conversations with him. Um, he got involved with the drunk, drugs and alcohol people. Um, we, we, we thought that it was something that he would come out of. Um, as we were saying earlier, there's, there's a kind of um, 
um, pleasure to be rebellious mm -hmm. and go against, uh, try things out. Um, we're never going to get rid of that. Um, in lots of ways, we try to encourage uh, you know, our, ch our, ch our children and houses to um, do different things, to try different experiences and things like that. I don't think that the majority of people um, actually realise, uh, for instance, when their sons go, daughters go away to university, go across to work, um, exactly what is going on when they're there. Um, that was a bit of an eye-opener um, to me. Um, certainly talking to some of my parents since um, uh, my, my boys' deaths, um, there are some of them who, who, who recognised quite you know, maybe how lucky um, they've been in mm. the, the, what has happened to their children. Um, you know, the, the, I think there, there is a failure to actually come to terms with, with, with the drug scene and the, con and the drugs culture that does exist. Generally. I mean, you could say we've, the opposite is that you know, there should be no drinking, there should be no smoking. I mean, you know, everything should be totally got rid of because it's a health implication at the end of the day, isn't it? If you legalise these things, there's going to be people who will abuse it. You, if you've been to Amsterdam, I'm yes. sure you, you can see the same sort of stag weekends going crazy and out of control. Sort of. Perhaps we could look at the example of the 1920s alcohol prohibition there, where, again, what we saw was ruthless criminals taking over the market. You saw all sorts of drug deaths from people drinking high quality quantity spirits. We've done very much the same with drugs. By making it illegal, the market is 100% controlled by criminals. Really, we're making these drugs far more dangerous, and the policies around it are causing massive destruction across the world. That's the issue that we think we need to look at. And we've also got this, this crazy thing that, at the end of the day, the government makes money out of alcohol, and I'm sure, in the sense that, you know, to have it controlled, they would be able to tax it, and it would therefore be a, a, an income stream for the government at the same time. But, I mean, that's, that's a long way down the road to take, isn't it, to, to actually legalise it? But you've got hope in this? Do you think it's doable? Absolutely. It, it's, it's happening in other places. But here, I know, but here. Do you, I mean, do you think the politicians have got that thing to be uh, forward think, Or do you think if the UK changed their rules, the old man would, would probably follow? I suspect that would be the case. But it's, it's a very good opportunity to show that um, uh, they've got different views and are more forward thinking than the uh, British government is being at the moment. Are you expecting some hostility to this uh, thrust? tonight uh, people down there to oh i hope that people will, will sit and listen and and i'm always up for a challenging question but i think i think the time is right for this i think there is increasing political will even in the uk we're seeing increasing moves by chief constables to decriminalize possession we're seeing the first discussions around the introduction of safe injecting facilities the introduction of heroin assisted treatment I genuinely believe there is a sea change in attitude. Oh, okay. Well, how, that's, that's, that's the thing. That how far do you go then? Let's, let's try that one. I mean, taking ecstasy is one thing. Injecting um, heroin is another level up. I mean, is it, in your idea, complete deregulation in that sense of no. anything goes? No, I think the more dangerous the drug, the more important it is to regulate it. And for... Uh, problematic injecting drug use, I think we should look at a model like they have in Switzerland where they have heroin-assisted treatment. For a drug more like cannabis, perhaps we could look to a Dutch-style coffee shop. And we need a, a range of in, uh, regulations between those two as a means of getting it under control. Have you got a website people want more information? Yeah, please take a look at www.tdpf.org.uk or the Anyone's Child campaign. And how's your, 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 you've been going around the world putting in these little uh, miniature soldiers and things. I mean, how did that all go? I have. That's been going wonderfully. I mean, I still talk to people uh, about it. And I mean, I'm, there's never been any issue about what happened to my boys. What I always tell them what the circumstances were. Uh, I've never had anybody who's refused to take one. Um, and I have spoken to complete strangers. Obviously, friends have done it and this, yeah. that and the other. Um, I mean, for instance, I've I, I just come back from Spain. And I spoke to the tour guide and told her what had happened to my boys. And uh, she's taken one to Peru. So, you know... Will take a picture of, and, and bring uh, it back? Well, I hope so. But yeah. it's just one, it's one of those things, you know. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, just by pointing out what happened to, to them. Uh, it's called, we know, the, the, the charity is called Anyone's Child. You know, and, and it's simply because, you know, it could happen to anybody. You have to, um, people do have to understand. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what Transform's trying to say, what Jane's trying to say, what I'm trying to say. 
Um, I think if people, you know, often when we have, do interviews and things, they, things get edited, the more um, sensational things that you know, are the things that tend to get quoted. Uh, and there's a lot more substance and a lot more that we have to say rather than the, you know, let's legalise drugs, which is how it sometimes just comes out. Well, there's always going to be that headline thing, yeah. but we don't edit our stuff, so everything you said will have gone out. Um, where do we go from here then? Do you, is, is there a call that you're going to put to MHKs? Are, 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 are you going to try and create this movement here, or, or is it more of a UK thing, as I said? At the moment, I, I haven't. The, the, our MHKs, or certainly the ones where represent me in Russia, are aware, and obviously very aware of, um, of, of my stance and, and, and what I said. Uh, I haven't. I haven't spoken to them yet. Um, I'm waiting for one or two other developments, which are not, because th uh, things are happening over okay. here. Would you come back and talk to us about it, please? Yeah. And if people are watching this on Monday, because obviously it's not much time before the event, please go along to the Manx Legion Hall, 7.30? 7.30. And uh, an interesting debate, and I wish you well. Thank, Thank you. you very much.